Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful and exciting discussion, we'll be trying to explore the difference between GitLab CI CD and then Azure DevOps CI CD agent, right? So this is my own explanation and understanding of these two different concepts. So I may be wrong. So let me know your opinion in the comment section below. So this is how I understand it. So we have GitLab CI CD pipeline which is the first one that came and then Azure DevOps came. So for GitLab, there are the, for the CI CD pipeline, there are three main components. There is a YAML file that you'll be working with. There is runners and there are executors, right, for GitLab. For Azure DevOps, there is the YAML you'll be using, an agent pool, right, or an agent and an agent pool, right. So let's see how it works. So this is a simple diagram that shows it. So we start with GitLab CI CD. So when we, in GitLab, what is used to execute your code is termed as a runner, right? So a GitLab CI CD runner is a software, right? That is used to run your code. That's the name, right? Runner. So run, it's used to run your job, run your pipeline. And the component of them are, is like this. This is how I understand it. So the runner is like a collection of this tools, right? So the runner consists of a runner agent, right? So an agent is like, let's say if you go to an office, there is a person that is going to be doing some jobs, right? So the runner agent is a software that is going to look at the tasks that you have, all the jobs on your pipeline, all the jobs in your YAML file, then it's going to analyze them and then it's going to execute them, right? So he's going to run all of these jobs. That is the runner. But in order to run all of these jobs, he needs some tools to be able to run the jobs, right? So, so the tools that he's going to use to run the job are known as executors, right? So they are like the, like the environment in which he's going to actually do these tasks that are written on the job. So they are called executors. So it can be a bash or a shell executor. So in other words, if you have a task that is to CD into maybe a directory, it's going to be using shell to do the task right so it's good to execute that particular task in case there's another option you want to use docker it's going to execute that task using docker or using ssh right or using kubernetes so that is the basic understand so it's like this so you have an office so the entire office is like the runner and then in the office we have a person he is the agent that is a software and he has some tasks to do which is the your yaml file and he's supposed to execute these things, supposed to do all of these tasks. But how does he do it? So he needs to use some tools to help him do that, right? So some of these tools include Shell, it includes Docker, it includes Kubernetes, it includes SSH. So that is how he's going to do the tool, right? So the executor is like the kind of environment in which he, the agent, is going to execute those particular jobs, those particular tasks. Then there is a deployment environment. So the deployment environment that like, so after he has done the job, he's going to, let's say, uh, whatever he has done, whatever he has built, whatever task he has done, it's going to push it somewhere. So this can be a different server. So the nice thing about GitLab CI CD runner is that you can use a shared runner or a self-hosted runner, right? So let's say you have your YAML file. You can use a shared runner, which is going to be the program that is going to run your job, run your tax, and then you can also have your own specific runner, right? Or self-hosted runner, in which you're going to go to GitHub and install the runner software on your local system, right? So the runner software is going to be like an agent software that contains the agent itself or the runner agent, and then the runner executors, right? You're going to pick one, you'd like to pick it shell powershell docker kubernetes on your system so in case you want to do a test if you trigger something on your jamo your repository it's going to the runner is going to look at your test that is there then it's going to execute the test on your system and it's going to turn, send the result back to gitlab right so for you to see if it passed or not <clears throat> So in some of the ways of setting it up is that you can have your YAML file on Git, GitLab and then you have another system 
can be a VM, it can be your local device, it can be a server somewhere. Then you install the runner software on that particular system. And then when you trigger something on your repository, it is going to communicate with your runner and the runner is going to look at the job and then do the tasks, right? So in case after it has finished building and executing the task, you want to push your code to your deployment environment, you just use the same runner to do the task, right? Either via SSH or something else. So that is how GitLab agents or runners work. So in GitLab, they are called runners. So a runner is a software that is going to execute your job, it's going to run your job. And it does that using executors, which can be shell, docker, or bash or Kubernetes. And then it does it inside your runner ecosystem, right? So on your system, so you are going to install this runner on a local system, or you can use a shared one. And it contains the software itself to execute the jobs using these particular methods. Okay, that is how I understand it. Now let's compare it to Azure DevOps. So for Azure DevOps, it's like this. We have the Azure DevOps CI CD pipeline. There is your build agent. They call it agent, not runners in CI CD for Azure DevOps. The build agent is a software that is going to run and build your job. That's why it's called, sometimes called a build agent, right? So what it's going to do is that it's going to look at your Azure pipelines YAML file for the jobs, the stages, the tasks there, then it's going to see how it's going to execute those tasks, how it's going to run it, if it's supposed to run, if it's supposed to build something. Now this build agent is a software that you are going to install somewhere, right? So there is two options. We have Microsoft hosted agent. So in that case, Microsoft have their own VM or their own Docker system on your system. It can be an operating system like Windows, uh, Ubuntu, Mac OS, then they have this build agent software installed on their own VM or their own server on premise on their system, right? On Microsoft Cloud or Microsoft Data Center or wherever it is. And this they themselves are managing it, right? You don't manage it. So whatever you are going to do there. It is in their hands, right? So they are managing everything. So because they are managing it and they are different people all over the world, they don't keep what you are doing. So they, after the job is done, everything is lost, right? So the other alternative is you have a self-hosted agent in which you are going to go to Microsoft, Azure DevOps, download the build agent software, go and create your own server or your own Ubuntu machine or your own VM, then install this build agent on that your system so that so that you yourself will be the one managing it so that is a self hosted agent right so you will be managing it so you go to azure devops you download the build agent software you install it on your machine on your vm on your container wherever you want it to be and then if you have some task and some job your build agent will be listening to your system on your ci cd pipeline to just be listening to it you should always have a line of sight to listen that's going to look at the jobs and then it's going to execute the jobs so the build agent is a software a big software that you run in your system that you install your system to run and build your jobs and it's going to pick different other softwares right so it's going to have if you download the build agent software you see that it's having git it's having node.js and some basic tools there these tools are software that are built and bundled together with the build agent so that in case you want to build a node.js front end it's going to the build agent is going to pick the node.js front end right as tax to do the job right or in case it's a dotnet package or in case it's git or ssh or python package right so the build agent is one big software that is installed on your system right which is an OS operating system, and it's going to give you the option of executing all of these tasks there using the different tools. And after you have finished everything, you can now deploy your result, deploy your build via SSH or via any other method to your deployment environment. And there's also something called deployment groups or deployment pool in which deployment environments can be one target machine 
that after you have finished doing your job, you are going to push the result to that target machine, or it can be a group of target machines, right? Which is very interesting. In GitLab, you can also do the same thing. Right, after you have finished running a Git your job, you can push it via SSH or via something to another deployment environment. So that is the basic concept behind GitLab run it, and then Azure build agents, right? So it's the same concept in which you have one person or one system that is going to be executing the job, but where you're going to put it is different, right? So that is the basic understanding. So I hope you have learned something. So to recap, a GitHub runner is a piece of software, right? That is going to run your job. It consists of a runner agent in code that is going to look at your task that you have and then it's going to see how best to do your job, right? And it's going to use executors like Shell or SSH or Docker or Kubernetes to actually execute your tasks. Then after that's finished doing everything, you can deploy it to your deployment environment. For, you can install your runner on your local system or on a VM, or you can use a shared runner to do the same task, to execute or to run your jobs for your pipeline. For Azure DevOps, they are called agents, not runners. And you can also call them build agents because the main thing is that they are going to pick your code. It's a software that is going to run and build your job, right? So it's going to look at your YAML file for all the jobs, the tasks there. Then this build agent is going to see, okay, which tool do I need to execute that particular task? Do I need Node.js to build the front end? Do I need .NET to build a package or NuGet package? Do I need Git to do something? Do I need Python to do something? So it's going to, build agent is going to understand it, pick the right software for the right task and execute the job. And that is can be done on your system, your actual VM, Docker or actual machine, which is either managed by Microsoft or you yourself, you manage it. That is the basic understanding. So thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something. And let me know if the understanding is clear, right? See you in the next session. Stay blessed. Bye.